Okay, this is the next in our series of notes on world history. We're going to start with prehistory, the time before uh, writing and all that was available, so that a lot of the history that we have is collected from artifacts from archaeological digs and things like that. So remember, as you're doing this, to take notes using the Cornell method. I will be checking those in class. Uh, and here we go. All right, as we've discussed, there's roughly... 13 year billion year history not of the world but just of time okay um, and what we're going to try to answer um, over the next couple of days is how is man different from the rest of the the animal kingdom well here's some basics of why man was different and why man was able to become the dominant species on this planet first of all we stand upright we're what's known as a biped we walk on two legs we have a language, and it's a, a discernible language, and there are different words and meanings for different things. We have a much larger brain, so that we are, have, are capable of reason, of thinking things out. Um, and the big key that separates us from everybody but the apes, really, is that we have a thumb. Um, it reminds me of a story when I was camping one time down in the Great Smoky Mountains, and they, they said, you have to put your food in these specially designed bear bins. Um, and the reason you had to put them in the bear bin was because there were bears around, and they would get into the food, obviously. But um, these bear bins could only be operated with somebody from, uh, with a thumb. Well, if you ever meet a bear or a grizzly bear, they have claws and paws and no thumbs. Um, so they would not be able to open these things, um, and therefore... Um, couldn't get at your food and would be better for them, better for us. Okay, so um, early civilizations, um, as I stated in the geography video, were often in the most fertile river valleys. Uh, this is because there were sources of fresh water. This makes it easier to grow crops because crops won't grow in salt water. Uh, for animals, just like humans, they need fresh water. Transportation, a river would provide a way to trade with other uh communities in the area, which is the fourth thing, the reason for why they were in fr uh, along fresh water in river valleys. Okay, um, archaeologists and anthropologists, we've mentioned them before, they are the people that study ancient civilizations. They conduct digs, they uh, do research on ancient ruins, they, they, they study the bones, the artifacts, the tools, and the weapons, and they use uh, a, a technique called carbon dating, carbon-14 dating or radiocarbon dating to judge how old it is. Basically, um, they judge the amount of carbon that should have been in um, the artifact when it was, young, when it was new um, based on and what it is today and the, the, what's called the half-life. It's a very technical science term, but basically the amount that's left after what it should have been there um, tells them how old it is. Now, there are several different ways of expressing dates like 2015 um, in history and there's two different ones that you're going to see a lot of you have bc which stands for before christ and ad which stands for anno domini that way is kind of being phased out because it's a very christian centric a lot of the rest of the world isn't christian so they're trying to get we've tried the historians and and other social scientists have tried to get to a way um, that's a little less culturally neutral and they've come up with one uh, a new system called BCE and CE. Okay, BCE stands for Before the Common Era, which is the time that we know as AD, from the, the year zero, the birth of Christ onward. Uh, and that makes CE the Common Era. So you have Before Common Era, Common Era. Um, you'll see both of these sets of terminologies in the readings and things that we do, and I want you to be familiar with them. Okay. Life itself begins in what is known as the Great African Rift Valley. This is on the eastern coast of uh, Africa in what is modern-day Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia. Um, and as you can see on the maps, um, we have a series of where, if you're familiar at all with some of the, the things that cause earthquakes and stuff like that, what are called known as tectonic plates. The earth is not just one solid piece of ground. It's a series of plates that move together uh, because what's underneath is hot molten uh, magma and they float on these rivers of magma or these seas of magma um, and they at times move back and forth to each other. Well, thousands of years ago, um, the area along the east coast of Raf Africa, which is a combination of the Arabian plate, the Indian plate, and the African plate all coming together, started to pull apart. 
Um, Africa is getting bigger. The Indian Ocean is getting smaller. Um, and it created this rift valley. And what the rift valley did, and we're going to watch a video on this in class, did, um, was it created a very fertile area, but it also created conditions that were perfect um, or at least demanded that a new species arise to be able to take advantage of what was there because there were less trees um, due to the changes in climate and it was also cut off uh, because of mountain ranges bursting up. Okay, so we'll get into that in some more detail by watching a couple videos later. Okay, there are several theories of man, and we're actually going to look at some of these origin stories in class. Okay, uh, but the two most common, at least in our world, um, in, in America, is the creationist or biblical version, which is the Garden of Eden story. It's believed to be somewhere along the Tigris-Euphrates Valley uh, in what is modern-day Iraq. Um, it's the story of Adam and Eve. Um, and it also brings in the idea of intelligent design, that there was some supreme being being that set this all in motion okay um, and that's if you believe that that's fine um, there is also a scientific uh, version known as the evolutionary version um, the evolutionary version states that the origins were most likely in Africa um, and it tracks uh, the spread of humans through Java man which is over in the, the uh, Indonesia and the East Asia Peking man in China Neanderthal man who was prominently in a uh, Europe Cromagna man who superseded um, Neanderthal man and Lucy um, who is an artifact. She is believed to be the oldest human, um, our oldest direct descendant as a human being. And you won't, when, I'm going to show you a picture in a second, you won't think that, I mean she looks more like an ape than a human, but the characteristics of her body um, show a distinct break from what we know as chimpanzees and other apes. Um, much closer to human beings, not uh, directly there. So, um, Lucy was, was what is known as a hominid or a pre-human. Many of them walked on all fours. They are our ancestors, okay? They lived about four million years ago, um, and they're not homo sapiens like we are. They're, they're scientific name is Australopithecus or southern ape and they appear in Africa like I said around four million years ago and they begin to walk upright on two legs instead of on all fours. Lucy's skeleton and you can see it on the right was discovered in East Africa in 1974. She is believed to be the old, oldest human. She lived to be about 40 years old and is as tall as probably a modern 10 year old so think third or fourth grade that's how big she is, okay? Um, and as you can see from the, the recreation of what she might have looked like, she's more ape-like than human, but the ability to stand on two legs um, and some of the other features of her skeleton make her genetically, not genetically, but physically more human, uh, at least in bone structure and things like that, than um, apes, okay? So just a brief timeline kind of of the des descent of man to becoming what we are today. So you have about two and a half to one and a half million years ago, you have a descendant called Homo habilis. Okay, he is what known as handyman is what that stands for. Okay, they appear in Africa. They have bigger brains than the other uh, apes that are moving around or the other proto-humans. Um, and they make the first tools from sticks and stones. And this is a big difference from apes to us is the use of tools. Okay million and a half years ago, Homo erectus, or upright man, appears. Uh, they gradually spread from Africa to Europe and then eventually to Asia. They built better hunting tools, including spears. They build shelters. They begin to use fire. About 120,000 years ago, you have the Neanderthals, who are believed to be a subspecies of Homo sapien, the wise man, and they appear in Africa, Asia, and Europe. They're the first humans to bury their dead, which could be a sign of... Uh, a religion of some sort, at least. There's some rituals involved with their, their culture. Um, and it's believed that nowadays um, the scientists are to show that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens probably live side by side um, in maybe competing villages. They were definitely competing for a food supply. Um, and they may have even been some intermarrying or intermating between them. About 35 million thousand years ago, Homo sapiens, the modern humans, are living in many parts of the world, including Australia. So Homo sapiens, basically through genetic uh, capabilities, bigger brains, um, more physical capability, out can beat the Neanderthals. The Neanderthals die out because they, or they're absorbed into the human race. And Homo sapiens, the, the, the modern human beings, 
are, are the dominant species. So five years after you start seeing Homo sapiens everywhere, the Neanderthals appear to die out in Asia and Europe. 20,000 years ago, you have modern humans finally making it out of Asia across uh, the land bridge that I know you learned about in Mr. James's class from Asia to the Americas. Okay, simply a map of migrations of Homo sapiens. It's believed that, that humans moved mostly by land, started in Africa, gradually spread out, um, and made it so that they had the whole planet covered probably by about 12,000 years ago. Okay. From the beginning, man's present on Earth uh, to approximately 10,000 BCE is known as the Stone Age because they use stone tools to do things. Okay. This is also known as the Paleolithic Age. Um, it's the first stone tool makers um, to 10,000 BCE. People are nomads. They're hunters and gatherers who move to follow food supply and climate. We'll talk about this a little bit more deeply in class. They use tools. Uh, they use pebbles as hammers. Um, they shape flints into axes and knives and scrapers and various other things. A hand axe, which is an axe like a cutting tool without a handle, dates to almost 2 million years ago. They're used for cutting just about everything. They used them for weapons. Okay, um, They made them from flint blown and antlers. Um, 15,000 years ago, bows and arrows begin to show up. Okay, um, And people began to use these weapons against the, each other to solve conflicts. Cave art, which you may have heard about, appears around 40,000 years ago. Paints were made from minerals such as clay, lime, charcoal, ground into powder, mixed with water or animal fat. They applied with brushes made of fur, feathers, moss, frayed twigs. Cave art depicted animals and people and may have had a religious meaning. We don't really know because there's no written history. But this is some of the first examples of human depicting what they were doing. Okay. Here's an example of one. As they moved, humans developed clothing, more sophisticated shelters to adapt to their environment. So you move out of Africa, which is very warm and uh, temperate all year round. You begin to move into Europe and Asia. You farther north you go, the colder it gets. Um, you got to have clothing. You got to move indoors. Okay, and they begin to develop spoken language. Okay, that leads us to the Neolithic age. So the last ice age ends approximately 12,000 years ago with the withdrawal of ice. River valleys begin to open up in the more temperate climates, so the more farther north, creating fertile areas that will grow wild crops. About 10,000 years ago, people begin to develop farming as a way of life. Plants and animals that are grown or raised by people are known as domesticated. Um, wheat and barley are two of the main crops that had grown in the wild. Um, they're two of the first domesticated plants. People collect the seeds from these plants and plant them using antlers as plows. Modern plows are invented around 6,000 years ago. Farmers also learned how to tame and breed wild sheep, goats, pigs, so they no longer need to hunt for meat. They need fertile soil and a water source, so they begin to gather near rivers or river valleys. Groups of farm grow into the first villages. As villages grow, they become towns, and from there on out. As farming methods improve, people begin to have a food surplus. So this leads to division labor. If you have more food um, than everybody can eat, not everybody needs to work on farming if you become that f efficient. So people begin to make other occupations. You have people that focus just on building houses or shelters for people. You have people that focus just on making tools. You begin to have people that focus on trade, um, trading with the next village over. Okay, They don't grow the stuff, they take it to the next village over. As civilizations begin to form, trade begins between the peoples, wars begin to be fought, and wars and trade lead to what's known as cultural diffusion, the spreading of ideas and culture from uh, place to place. Um, and this is a major concept in global history. We'll get into it a lot during class. Okay, so the first civilizations, as you can see on the map, developed around the world. Many of these independent. The first one is believed to have shown up with the Sumerians here in Mesopotamia. Um, but very close behind was the Indus River, um, the Chinese area, and Mesoamerica and Eastern America, and the Nile River Valley. All of these, especially the, the, the American ones, grew up totally separate from the, uh, the, the ones of Asia and Europe. Okay, so now, complete the Google form on Google Classroom and submit it. Uh, there will be a few questions on there. That is due before the start of class tomorrow.